Hey, what up, players? It's Wallboss Tayf in this mug. Today we're looking at Gorok, the fine cast figure. I'm just gonna tell you that uh, I was gluing, super gluing his his arm to his shield. So here's the shield. There is the back of it, and uh, I realized that my camera wasn't filming. So I have to pop that baby off and get back to it. So here's the Gorok model for the Lizard Man army. And this video is a video of appreciation as a loot video for Warhammer Fat Kids who participated in the July Painting Challenge, posted all 31 days, answered all the questions, did the tertiary objectives, and asked if I could do a Lizard Man video. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get the Bastodon, Bastilodon, whatever it's called, figure. It's a little bit out of my price range for a big monster that I do not have an army for, but I thought this model right here was a nice enough looking figure that I wouldn't mind uh, just just painting it up and either having it, keeping it, or trading it off and selling it once it's all painted up for a nice price. Beautiful sculpt. It's only one piece, the body itself, and the shield is a separate piece. But let's look at the body and see that there really is not any any trouble with it. There's no there's no fine cast shenanigans. The uh, figure looks very nicely sculpted. The scales, the skin looks really stretched. The scales look really hard and nasty. This weapon looks suitably old and um, exudes just this really nice lethal quality with the spikes here on the front. The uh, ball, the gold ornamentation looks really nice. And the thing that I really liked about this model being that it was fine cast were these skulls. Traditionally, if you look at all my other fine cast unboxings, you will notice that the skulls all look really janky. Like the upper jaw kind of tapers down into this point that looks really unrealistic. The head's proportion just not really well. The slope of the forehead looks a little too big and cartoonish, and it just doesn't look realistic at all. And considering that Warhammer is going for this very grim and realistic tone, the skulls on fine cast models just do not do it justice. So it's good to see that they're finally getting their act together, in my opinion, at least. I love these scars and all the slashes across his body that really are a cool testament to how much this guy has been fighting over the years. He's an albino lizard man, a Saurus, and I think that is awesome. I think it'd be cool to have an albino unit of Temple Guard or, or Saurus warriors or something just to show how how rare and how awesome they are. He is in the fluff, if you read the fluff, he is blessed by one of the old ones, the old gods with the funny names. So I think it's something like Topico or Tipico or Topenga, something, one of the old gods that is the god of wisdom or something blessed him to be just super awesome in combat. And in the fluff, he, he withstood a high elf charge. He withstood a chariot charge. To his face, he withstood a dark elf lance thrust through his chest, and he's just a really mean, mean machine. Look at that shield! Oh, looks really nice. So Warhammer Fat Kids, they did Talarn and Crute, uh, Crute-based armies for the July Painting Challenge. If you have been living under a rock, have not seen the July Painting Challenge videos, I'm gonna leave a link to the Warhammer Fat Kids channel. Check out all of their videos. Check out everybody in the, the challenge. I'm doing these appreciation videos and linking it to their channels so that anybody who comes to see me can go and check out their channels as well. And I got a lot more loot videos on the way for the people who participated and successfully completed this year's 2013 July Painting Challenge. Thanks for watching the video, Gorok. Uh, Great, great looking character, gonna be a lot of fun to paint. If you can get your hands on him for a good price, then I definitely suggest you picking him up because he, he looks really cool. Thanks for watching everybody.